Do you want to learn how to paint flawless cabinets just like the professionals? Well, stay tuned. We're going to share our three P's for painting cabinets and trim that will allow anyone to get professional results. So today we're talking paint. One of the things that we hear all the time is how do you get a really good finish on your cabinets? Um, a lot of people have not done that before. You know, a lot of people have done walls and stuff. And we did our whole kitchen like what a year ago? A year ago. Beginning of COVID. Lots of lessons learned there. Yeah, we did, a, and we did a lot of research before we did it, and found out really the best way to paint uh, trim and cabinets. And we're going to give you our four P's in this video today. Uh, today we're we're we did a new cabinet. Uh, in our kitchen, but it's exactly the same way that you do it in a van. And so we're going to take you through step by step exactly how we get a glass like finish on our cabinets. So P number one is prep prep. You're going to want to sand your raw wood with 220 sandpaper and then clean it up. Yeah, the 220 will give you a nice finish on the wood. You want to sand all the edges. You want to sand all the flat surfaces. So that's P number one prep. And let's get into the other three P's. We're Jeff and Lisa, and during the 2020 quarantine, we did something we thought was only a dream. We bought a Sprinter van and converted it into the ultimate road trip vehicle. On this channel, we share our van life experience, including van build how-tos, tips, hacks, and product reviews, plus van travel and lifestyle. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So the next P is the primer. Primer is super important, especially on raw wood. Um, but even if you're doing it over existing wood, the primer is really important. We use Sherwin-Williams Extreme Bond Primer. It's important to use a bonding primer. There's a couple of different kinds of primer. One is more of a sealing primer. Um, and that seals the surface so that all the paint you put on doesn't absorb in. But a bonding primer creates a mechanical bond between the surface and your paint that you're going to put on that really makes it adhere really well and also give it a really nice surface. You can use a roller or a brush. It really doesn't matter. This, this stage... Yeah, because you're going to sand after, it, it doesn't have to be a super great finish with the primer. Okay, just get it on there, let it dry. And away you go. Yep. So the third P is picking your paint. Make sure that you don't use wall paint for your cabinets. If you want to use a good cabinet paint, either by Benjamin Moore, Sherwin-Williams, Magnolia, there's a several out there that... So why would you want to use a cabinet paint as opposed to a wall paint? Because a wall paint is latex-based. This is a urethane-based paint, and it will grab those cabinets much better and it will harden like a shell almost. Yeah. If you, we made the mistake several years ago of painting a, an amwa and a bed using latex paint Bad mistake. and it never hardens. It's always a little bit Sticky. gummy or rubber. You can always stick your fingernail into it. You set something on that nightstand and it would stick to it. We made that mistake once. We'll never make it again. Uh, this paint by Sherwin-Williams is fantastic because it, like Lisa said, it hardens like to a hard shell and uh, gives and a really nice finish. Yeah, the finish on it is amazing. And then cabinet paints also have a, a property which is called um, it, it self-flattening. What does that mean? Self-leveling. Self-leveling. Leveling, right. Leveling. What does that mean? It, it just smooths like, it is like glass when it yeah. covers yeah. your... So it, as you put it on, whether it's with a roller, a brush, or spray, it levels out and it gets rid of those, those brush marks or, or roller marks and uh, gives you that really nice finish. Right. So without further ado, let's get into it and show you exactly how we do it. Yep. We wipe all of the boards down with a damp cloth and then we set them on these paint triangles so they're up off the table. Now we're going to spray our uh, primer on because we just got a new spray gun and I wanted to test it out and practice with it But really you can get just a good of results with the primer uh, Using a brush or a roller really doesn't matter 
Now, if you're using a roller, then one coat is probably gonna be fine. With a spray gun, I needed two coats. So we've got two coats of primer on all of the cabinets and on the face frame on both sides of the cabinets. And um, so a lot of times after you finish painting, you notice some little imperfections like where the seams on these shaker uh, cabinet doors are. There were a couple of places where I could kind of see a little bit of a, a crack or a seam. Um, and so I went ahead and puttied those up. Also, there was one board that had a little knot with a little hole and I puttied that up. So I go ahead and do that. And then you just want to hit them with a light sanding of 220 just to smooth out any um, imper imperfections or blemishes. And then we'll be on to the painting. So here we go. I just use the sanding pads that go on my orbital sander. And for um, sanding paint, I like to use these mesh ones because they don't clog up um, with the paint and they just fit right over that. And it's a nice um, little way to, a little sanding block that you can use your orbital sander. So there we go. Got them all sanded on both sides. Um, I always paint the back sides first. And um, so, you can see the ones with the holes where the hinges are going to go or the backs. So I'm going to paint those first. I'm going to do two coats of the paint and then I'm going to let them dry overnight and then I will paint the other side. So the reason I paint the back side first is so that when you turn them over, the triangles normally won't leave any marks, but if by chance they do anything, it's going to be on the back side, not on the front. It'll be easy to touch it up and you won't even notice it. Um, so we'll get ready to, to start painting now. After sanding, I just spray a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a cloth and wipe them down to get rid of any of the dust. So we've covered the, the first three P's. That is the prep, prep, and then primer. primer. Then your paint choice, which again, super, super important. Probably the most important out of the whole thing, right? Yeah. I don't know if it's the most important. They're all important, but you gotta, you gotta have a good high quality cabinet and trim paint. And the final P is your paint application. And so a lot of people, most people are gonna be doing this with a brush and roller. So we wanna cover that first. We're gonna be um, spraying ours. You really, if you want the best finish possible, then you, you need to spray. Uh, you can get a really good finish with a paint and roller, but to get the absolute best, you're gonna to have to go with a spray gun. And we'll show you the one we use. It's pretty inexpensive. So what we like is the Wooster that you can get at Home Depot. And uh, you want to use their, their you know, high quality roller and you want to use a quarter inch nap. This is a 3 8 because that's all we have right now, but a quarter inch nap, high quality roller and a good quality brush. Again, we like the Purdy uh, or the Wooster. You can always also get Purdy at Lowe's and those are really good quality as well. So um, you want to just show them kind of the technique to get the best finish? So what I do on the cabinets is I cut in to all my corners with the angled brush and then um, I will roll my, my existing paint everywhere else and I roll it on and then I'll take this end that's towards you, lift it a little bit up and then take it and give it a nice clean um, brush stroke on that. Yeah, that way, because a lot of times people, you'll see like a line where of the paint buildup, and by lifting that edge and rolling across the whole surface, you get rid of all those and you get a really nice finish. And like we said, this quality paint and trim um, paint or cabinet and trim paint is self-leveling. So you want to get it on there really nice. But then if you do make any mistakes or let's say you get a drip or something, What's the best thing to do? Leave it. Just leave it. Okay. Don't go back and try to touch things up because the paint is self leveling. If you start messing with it after a few minutes and it, it started horrible. to set, yeah, you will not be able to get it as good as it, as it could, could be. Yep. And it also is not going to self level. So what you want to do is just let it dry. If you get a drip or you have a blemish or something, let it dry, wait a couple of days, and then sand it down. You wanna wait a couple of days for the paint to start to cure so it hardens, and then you just sand it lightly. And then what we do is just with a brush or with a roller, 
With a brush, you can kind of stipple that area, or with a roller, you just kind of roll over it and um, make it look really good. So that's a real key is don't mess with it once you get it on, yep. right? Yeah. So let's go to the spring. So this is the um, spray gun that we're using, and there's a few out there. You can get the Wagners, and the Wagners are okay for about eighty to hundred dollars. Um, but the Graco is a real high quality gun that the professional used. We have had one of the big Graco's um, with the big twenty-five or fifty-foot hose and the big pump and everything for years. The problem with that is on a small job like this, it's kind of a hassle to get set up and it uses about a quarter of a gallon just to get everything primed and the hose filled. And then when you're finished, you gotta get all that paint out of the hose and everything. And it's just kind of a hassle. So we just got this smaller gray coat, it's the True Coat 360 BSP. This one is about $235. They also make the, the DSP um, that's about $165 on Amazon. We'll link to both of these in the description. But the thing, the only thing the VSP has is variable speed. Um, the, the DSP, which is dual speed, is either high or low. The VSP, which is for variable, has a from one to 10. Um, and on cabinets, you're usually gonna wanna go with a real low speed. I set it on the one, um, and that way it just doesn't put out a lot of paint. And I can go pretty slowly and cover it, make sure everything's covered, and I don't get a lot of overspray um, around it or in the air. And so I like this one just for that reason that has the variable speed. Um, really easy to use. The, the VSP holds 42 ounces and the DSP holds 32 ounces. So you don't have to refill quite as often with the VSP, but they're both great. We'll both give you the same quality of finish. Um, and so if you're interested in getting that, like I said, if you do, if you're doing your entire van or a set of cabinets, it's worth the $165 to get the, a gun, or even, even the less expensive Wagners are gonna do the job for you. Um, but we really like the Graco. So let's get going. So now we've got our first light coat on, on them. On these cabinets in the kitchen, we're gonna do three coats on these, um, just because they get a lot of wear and tear, and I like to have them solid. Uh, we are gonna wait four hours, hit them with another light coat, let them sit overnight, and then turn them over and do repeat for the other side. So now we've got two coats of primer, two coats of paint on these cabinets. We let them sit overnight. Now we're gonna flip them over and give the other side, the front side, two coats of paint. Okay guys, so we got them painted, we got two coats on the, on the back, three coats on the, on the front, and we've got them installed. So I wanna give you a few final tips and thoughts on these. Um, first of all, let's review the four P's. The first P? Prep. Second? Pick your paint. <laughs> no. no, primer. <laughs> primer. So, so prep. Prep which is the sanding. You wanna make sure you sand it with 220 grit. Even, you can even go up to 320, make sure it's really smooth. And then the primer, good quality bonding primer. And then the, the third P is picking your paint. Picking your paint. Okay, good quality cabinet and trim paint, the ones we recommend. We use uh, the Sherwin-Williams emerald urethane. Benjamin Moore makes a really good one. Magnolia makes a really good one. There's a few others, but go with a high quality. You're going to spend more money, but it's going to be well worth it. And you it. want to use a satin finish. Yeah, satin if you're going with a dark color, semi-glossy if you're going with white. That's yep. what we recommend. Yep. Um, and then the fourth P is actually painting, the application of the paint. And you can use a brush or roller. You can get pretty good results with those high quality paints. 
we did use a, um, a spray gun, and we're going to be doing a review on that um, Graco True Coat 360 VSP. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're going to be doing a review on that here coming up um, if you're interested in getting a gun. So after you paint the cabinets, you'll want to have them sit for a couple of days. And this allows the paint to really harden. Um, even now that they're installed, I let them just sit out every night yeah. like this open. Um, and I, it just lets them cure without sticking to anything. Yep. So they're gonna, it's going to take about a good two to three weeks for them to really, really harden. Um, so if you have any blemishes or anything that you want to sand, you want to wait at least two to three weeks. Yep. So and, they're fully cured. Yep. But, but a couple of days is good for installing them. You just don't want, they're a little bit soft and they can scratch easily for the first couple of days. So yep. we always wait a couple of days before we install them. And then what about hardware? And then, so I picked the hardware out, mm -hmm. the hardware's in here. So here's the hardware that will be installed on it. But again, we won't install the hardware um, for another couple of weeks, um, just because you don't want your hardware sticking to your cabinet. Yeah, so if we, you ever want to change it out, and then you're going to peel the paint off. So give yeah. it at least two weeks before you install that. So those will be installed yep. in a, another couple of weeks. Yep, yep. Hopefully you got something out of this video, learned a little something. Don't be intimidated by painting cabinets. It's really, if you use the right tools and go through those four steps we talked about, you can get great results. And you know what? If it doesn't turn out exactly how you want it, you can always Sand hit it with it. sandpaper and do another coat. Yep. 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 It's always fixable. Yep. Yep. Okay, guys. Thanks, Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.